What is up everybody on YouTube? This is your boy SRX Jess and welcome back to my YouTube channel. Today's video is most definitely a highly requested one. I'm gonna be sharing with you guys how I edit my Instagram photos as well as give you guys a few tips and tricks in terms of my thought process when I take photos. Before we hop into the tutorial, I wanna thank Skillshare for sponsoring today's video. Skillshare is an online learning community for creators with more than 17,000 classes on videography, productivity, photography, and so much more. Skillshare is perfect for anyone who is looking to turn their passion into a full-time job or you know for people People who are looking to start their own business or just simply progress in their own lives in an area in which they're genuinely passionate about. Skillshare definitely gives you guys all the tools that you're gonna need to potentially meet your goals. Premium membership begins around $10 a month for unlimited access, but the first 100 people to click the link in the description box below will receive two whole months for free. I have a feeling that those spots are gonna fill up quick, so make sure you be one of the first few to check Skillshare out. You guys can find all the information about Skillshare and everything mentioned in today's video in the description box below. So in terms of the gear slash software that I use to take and edit my photos, for my camera, I use a Canon M6 with a 22 millimeter lens. And then when I'm just on the go and I don't have my camera on me, I just use my iPhone, just the iPhone 7. The laptop that I use to edit my photos is the 2013 MacBook Pro 13 inch with Retina. And then in terms of the software that I use, I use Adobe Lightroom and I use a Visco slash VSCO cam. So in today's video, I'm going to be editing three types of photos for you guys. So for the first photo, I'm going to be editing a food photo slash flat lay. The next one will be a fashion slash outfit of the day type of photo. And then the last photo will be kind of like an architecture slash interior photo. So kicking things off with the food photo slash flat lay, my top tips when it comes to shooting food or anything that's like a flat lay type of photo is, you know, don't be afraid to like go that extra mile to get that good shot. And with that being said, don't be afraid to, you know, ask the people that you're with like, oh, hey, is it okay if I can just like rearrange the stuff real quick? So, you know, make sure that you can get the shot in which you want. But take the time to incorporate some props like use the forks, use the knife, use the restaurant's menu to, you know, add that little bit of interest into the actual photo. So starting with the food photo, I honestly don't do a lot to my photos. I kind of just like to keep the tones true. So I'll go ahead and up the exposure a little bit. I'll go ahead and add some contrast as well. I like to kind of bring out the highlights, but at the same time, I also like to bring down the shadows. I'm gonna pull up the whites because like I said, I just want the tones to stay true to the, how they are. So bring up the whites and then bring down the blacks. And then the overall clarity, I'll bring that up just a tiny bit. So I'll go ahead and grab this brush tool right here and then I'll make sure that it's on clarity. And this is perfect to bring out all the details in all the photos so i'll go ahead and add it to like this coffee the salad the other coffee and then the avocado toast and then i'll probably put a little bit like on the menu as well i'll bring down the size of the brush and then i'll kind of just bring out like the napkin and the knives and this this knife right here and maybe this menu guy right here so after I'm done editing the photos in Lightroom, I'll go ahead and airdrop them to my phone so I can start editing them on VSCO slash Visco Cam. I'm sorry in advance because I'm gonna be looking at my phone the whole entire time, but I'll be sure to kind of like throw up something on the side so you guys can see exactly what I'm doing in terms of editing. So I kind of do the same edit with all of my photos, but I add a little something here and there to each one. Starting off with the food photo, I'll go ahead and open it. And the filter that I've been really liking lately is A6. So it's at a 12 right now, but I don't like my photos to look too filtery. So I'll go ahead and drop it down to maybe like a five or a five and a half. Five and a half is definitely that happy medium. Like I said, I don't like my photos to look like it's doing too much. I kind of like the photo to speak for itself. I'll just go ahead and maybe sharpen it a bit. And then to add a bit of warmth, I'll go ahead and up the temperature just a little bit, not too much. So I've been really enjoying adding grain on my photos lately. So I'll go ahead and take the grain and just add a little bit, not too much again to keep things subtle. So maybe at like a 1.8. So that's it for the food slash flat lay photo. So for the second photo, I'm gonna be editing like a fashion slash outfit of the day photo. And my top tips when it comes to shooting fashion photos is keep things light, you know, don't try to be too posy. Just kind of have fun with it. And another tip that I have is, especially when you're shooting with a photographer, like you're shooting with your friend, communicate and talk to each other in terms of like what vibe you're going for. So you guys both have a clear understanding of the type of photo in which you're trying to achieve. And overall, especially when it comes to like fashion and outfit of the day photos, just like I said, don't do too much, keep things light and keep things simple. So when it comes to fashion photos, like I said, I just kind of like to keep things simple and I like to let the clothes do all the talking for themselves. So with that being said, this pose and this overall image is very simple, so I don't want to do too much to it. So again, I'll just up the exposure, bring up the contrast just a little bit, bring up the highlights, 
bring down the shadows, bring up the whites if there is any, and then I'll bring down the blacks, and then up the clarity, and then again, I will take the clarity brush, and then I will just zoom in, and then I'll just go ahead and make everything that I want to stand out, stand out with this tool. Get that collar going, kind of want my hat to be a little bit more black, so the clarity thing helps with that. And then I kind of want my jawline to be a little bit more defined, so I'll go ahead and just add a brush just like that. Add some more clarity down here to the bottom, because it's looking a little flat and yeah overall i think this looks pretty nice so when it comes to the outfit photos again i'll just use a6 and i'll kind of drag it down at least for this one or like a six looks really good this image is super sharp anyway but i'm gonna go ahead and add a, just a bit more sharpness so maybe like a 0.6 or a 0.5 i'm gonna add a little bit more warmth again with the temperature so i'm gonna up it to maybe 0.5 and then because someone is actually in this photo whether it just be like a fashion photo or if i'm with a group of people or i'm with like family or something i always up the skin tone because the color of your skin tone can get lost especially when you use certain types of filters going to add just a a bit maybe just one for fashion photos at least i definitely do like to add a bit more grain than i usually do so for other photos i would probably just do like one to one and a half but for fashion photos i like to add maybe two to two and a half because i like how it adds a bit more interest to the overall photo so like i said i'm gonna add some grain just a little bit more than i usually would maybe a 2.2 so that would be it for the fashion photo And the last photo that we're going to be editing today is kind of like an architecture slash interior type of photo and my top tip when it comes to shooting those types of photos is to make sure that everything is straight and what i mean by that is try to make sure that the landscape of the actual photo is straight take your camera and make sure that like everything is lined up and positioned you don't want anything crooked you kind of want everything to be streamlined and like i said nicely placed and straight so for the interior photos, again, I'm just not going to do too much to it, but I do this thing with all of my interior photos where I bring up the exposure, bring up the contrast again, and then I make the highlights really bright, especially in interiors and stuff. There's a lot of lights and there's a lot of things that are bouncing off of light. So I think it's nice when the highlights are a little bit higher. So I'll go ahead and bring up the highlights a lot and not too much where it's like overbearing. And then again, I'll bring down the shadows, turn down the blacks, and then bring up the overall clarity, use this clarity tool, and I'll go ahead and highlight all the things that I want to be highlighted i want all of this to be very sharp so i'll go ahead with this brush tool and i'll just kind of brush these pieces in so for the interior photo again just use the a6 filter so maybe a 5.8 because it is an interior slash architecture type of photo i do want it to be very sharp and crisp so i'll go ahead and add a bit more sharpness maybe like a 0.7 again add that temperature just a little bit because this photo in particular is already warm so maybe like a 0.2 and then to finish it off the grain so 1.5 looks pretty good so i'll go ahead and just save that and that does it for today's video you guys thank you so much for watching hopefully all of your questions were answered because again a lot of you guys have been asking me how i edit and how i take my instagram photos so hopefully you learned something today and thanks again to skillshare for sponsoring today's video again the first 100 people to sign up with the link below will receive two months of free learning and then after that it's just ten dollars per month i have a feeling that these 100 spots are definitely going to fill up quick so be sure to check out skillshare you guys can find links to everything mentioned as well as everything about skillshare linked in the description box below be sure to give this video a big thumbs up you found it helpful subscribe for more content like this and yeah i think that's it so until next time peace